Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Interview Talk Show. I'm your host, Susan McCord, and my guest today is Glenish Usher. Hi. <laughs> Had troubles with her name. Okay, so anyway, where are we located? What is the name of your business? We are in an incredible art studio. It's uh, the Mystic Masala Aromatherapy, and we're at Onyx Studios, 405 West 5th Avenue corner of Yukon and behind the red door. <laughs> and that's in Vancouver for all of our, our overseas uh, listeners. So you offer Indian head massage. This has become sort of the mm -hmm. new uh, massage of mm -hmm. the century. I, mm -hmm. Everyone's talking about it. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about it. What are the benefits? Well, it's actually an ancient massage, even though it's new now. Yeah. Um, but it really works on the central nervous system. It totally relaxes the whole system. It's almost like getting a full body massage without having to take all your clothes off. And you know, the head has a lot of different acupressure points uh, that are very um, sensual, very mm -hmm. uh, therapeutic, connected to the different organs in the body. Uh, a one hour Indian head massage is literally like a trip to heaven. So it helps with insomnia, it helps with um, migraines, fatigue, mm -hmm. hair loss. There are so many numerous benefits to the Indian head massage. I think personally when I've seen clients the biggest one is uh, stress relief on a, on a very big level. So mm -hmm. do you think that this would be a really good thing for women who have postpartum depression or menopausal symptoms, would this help for that? Absolutely, absolutely. As I said, it really kind of soothes and settles the nervous system. And because it is a, a very deep massage, it does work on the hormonal system as well. In conjunction with the incredible aromatherapy oils that I use, it helps with emotional stress. You know, the plant essences are very, very wise in their medicine. So it, it does, it's kind of like heart medicine. The aromatherapy oils in conjunction with the different techniques on the head help to relieve uh, symptoms of stress and you know often when you're stressed out it can lead to depression so yeah. you know if you've had if you whatever the situation is once you've had an indian head massage it kind of also is a catalyst to self-healing and it helps with memory Yes. So it, yes. do you find this would be, is this in the medical records, is helping people with Alzheimer's or dementia? It's not technically in the medical records, but truthfully, this comes from a very ancient science of Ayurveda, which really means... That Thank you for saying the word, because I had a hard time with that word. <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> well, and Ayurveda, it's a great word, because Ayur means life and Veda means wisdom. So if you, if you put mm -hmm. that together, it's the wisdom of life. You know, all of these different diseases that come about are a progression in the body. And all of these practices are about a very, very deep kind of self-healing. Mm -hmm. So whether you're dealing with the respiratory system or the circulatory system or the nervous system, all of these are related to these, you know, to both dementia and Alzheimer's. Yeah. Have you got any stories about people who have walked away from this with a newfound, mm -hmm. you know, lease on life or... Oh, absolutely. Really? I would have to say, except for maybe one or two clients, most everybody who walks out this door is transformed. And I'm really not saying that lightly. How many times do they have to come to be transformed? Uh, it's different for everybody. Roughly? Maybe even just once. Really? Mm -hmm. From the head massage? You know, I had somebody who actually had cere cerebral palsy. And honestly, after the first session, it was like when she walked out of the room it was like looking at a different person and I actually kind of started crying and she she kind of did as well because she she said to me I have not felt this connected and with so much hope as I do now and honestly she was like a different person Has she been back yes so I designed all of these different blends and aromatherapy products to help people to actually connect with their own inner healing. Um, so I started actually with a line of pure soy candles and then I work with an incredible women's cooperative in Nepal. They are herbalists, they're Ayurvedic practitioners, they're incredible entrepreneurs. Um, it's all fair trade. The herbs are all wild crafted in the Himalayan region. Let's so talk about your aromatherapy. Uh, 
for aphrodisiac mm -hmm. right so let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that yeah right? when i was reading up on this the nutmeg was saying that it's it's, it's one of nature's uh sedatives mm -hmm. right and um and then it also says that it's uh it's an aphrodisiac so i'm trying to figure out how you use this mm -hmm. like are you going to go to sleep in five minutes after you become aroused like how does this work how does it balance i know it does seem a little yeah. bit of a, a contradiction, contradiction. yeah yeah, a little yeah. Bit. well it's very interesting because you know if you are ready for a night of amour if you're stressed out the last thing you feel like doing is you know also oh, it uh, calms the body before the action it actually works on the mind oh, okay. that's the thing uh, from a mental standpoint, nutmeg is one of the most calming. It's the valium of the herb world. It's very calming to the central nervous system. In fact, if you grate a little bit in some milk, you know, and you drink it as a little tonic before bed, it does calm the mind down. But it's a heating little uh, spice. So again, it stimulates all the, the sexual organs and the bl it gets the blood moving. Doesn't sound like you're gonna sleep much to me. <laughs> Do you have anything that you sell that's directly for a sexual purpose? Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, my that spice one? candle, I have had people actually tell me that they've put it next to their bed and lit it and, and truly it has had an effect. It's really kind of brought a Might little bit one of, of those uh, home with me. joie de vivre to the bedroom. <laughs> There's a beautiful uh, Ayurvedic um, practice where every single morning before you shower, you warm up a bit of sesame oil and you do a self-massage all over your body for about five, ten minutes. And then you allow the steam of the shower to kind of pe let the oils penetrate. And after literally only about five days, your whole skin quality has totally changed. Really? So would yes. that be good to use inside a a steam room just take some oil in with you or what about yes. an infrared sauna fantastic as long as you're sitting on a towel you don't put right. it all over for everybody else yeah, right exactly okay very mm -hmm. I, i'm gonna try that because it's amazing i like the infrared mm -hmm. sauna mm -hmm. the indian massage this would this not be something that would be phenomenal to have in a hair salon i'm so glad you asked <laughs> yes incredible because you know most people what a business what an amazing business and actually what i've just developed now because i do train uh, people to do the indian head massage i have a 15 hour course which happens over a weekend it's very wonderfully intensive because it's very hands-on work is most clients who come to me say i'm really frustrated i go for a full body massage and they only spend two minutes on the head and so many people have said to me, my favorite part of going to the hairdresser is getting the shampoo. Yeah. And there actually is a move in the Indian head massage flow called shampoo. <laughs> it's a beautiful circular thing which really moves the scalp around. So, uh, yeah, I decided it makes so much sense. So I've devised a really beautiful three hour training for spa professionals and hair salon professionals. Because it would be fantastic. It would, even if they yes. did it for maybe five five minutes after i actually watched a video um when i was researching all this and there was one on youtube that had 15 million hits and it was about indian head massage oh, yes. and it was a fellow in india doing it but he's doing it with energy have you seen the video it's the cosmic barber of yes. rajasthan <laughs> yes that one yes. i'm watching this thing and i it's amazing oh, yeah. like oh, yeah. how many hits it has oh. so this is obviously a popular um mm -hmm. mas massage technique oh yeah but you've been doing it since 2008 correct yes, yes. and yeah. are you finding that your clientele is is getting bigger and bigger or is is it the word Dude. got out there oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. And, okay, let's talk about the oils mm -hmm. because I got big hair. <laughs> so if I came to see you, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do it on a lunch hour from work because I'd have to wash my hair. Right. So you really would have to take that into account as a woman, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. A guy could go and do a five-minute thing and yes. pull out the door. Right. But for somebody who has to go to work or they just be prepared that they were going to have to go home and have a shower and wash their hair. Right, exactly. Okay. You can't so, do it without oils? I do do it without oils when... For that exact reason you know mm -hmm. some people just can't uh, take the time for the oils or have to go back to work or going out so i i sometimes will just put a little bit on my fingertips and just literally work it into the scalp so that the hair doesn't even really get much oil on it but the benefit is uh to actually get the oil 
and then literally go home and just relax and put a nice warm towel over your head and let the oils really sink in. I've traveled in India and I actually met my husband there on a train, <clears throat> but that's another story <laughs> for another day. Part two. Part two. <laughs> um, people touch more. In the barber shops, an Indian head massage is just part of the whole, you know, the whole treatment. Yeah. You go get your hair cut and you get a good little head rub. Um, and I think that... So the culture in general is more yes, that way? Yes, absolutely. And you know, massage is not a luxury. It's not... A, it's a way of life. It's a way of life. Yeah. It's a way of life. Cool. There's an understanding how touch really is important. And I think, you know... Well, look at babies. Exactly. Babies crave yes. it. I mean, they're, they they yes. can't talk and they're telling you they need touch. So maybe this is something that brings people back and, mm -hmm. you know, this, the Indian culture can teach us something, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. All of you people out there who have never heard of uh, the Indian head massage and some of these incredible spices and aphrodisiac wonderful ointments and things she has here, um, I really would like you to, you know, look into this more and give give it a shot. And let's get back to touching each other and and being there for each other as just people. Like we're not doing that anymore. We need to bring this back. Your contact information. What's your website? It's uh, themysticmasala.com, and my Indian head massage is thousandpetallotus.com. So we'll have those underneath the website as always, scrolling at the bottom. So thanks everybody for tuning in today and thank you so much for extending your time today. I know you're very, very busy here and she's in hot demand now. <laughs> and I'm gonna book an appointment and uh, one day when I have to wash my hair soon. Okay, we'll take care. Okay. Bye, bye. everyone. Bye.